Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we embark on a journey into the cosmos. We will dance with the stars, drift through the magical expanse of space, and find answers to questions about space we may not have even realized we had. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to unwind and find comfort in the space that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. Here and now, you have no obligations. There is no to-do list. Your only goal now is to allow your body to relax. As you're lying down and listening to the sound of my voice, your body is resting and soon As we embark on this cosmic journey together, your mind will follow. With those eyes still closed for a moment, I want you to imagine that the entirety of the Milky Way is overhead, blanketing your ceiling. It is a cosmic haze that glistens and twinkles, full of stars, asteroids, and the planets. You see the silvery surface of Mercury, the scarlet surface of Mars, the orange and yellow haze that is Venus, and the biggest planet of all, Jupiter, which is a living marble of stormy rust and yellow clouds. Beside it, Saturn spins with its brilliant gold rings tilted, and its cloudy surface constantly swirling with a mosaic of warm tones. Then, you see Uranus, a brilliant blue sea of color with a canted ring swirling around it in constant motion. Beyond that, there is Neptune, such dark blue that it truly does remind you of the god of the sea himself. And finally, on the very end, there is Pluto, the tiny gray planet that seems to shimmer even though the sun is so far away from it. The magic of the universe above you is undeniable, and as you watch the planets move in their never-ending arc, something even more magical begins to happen. From the purple and black facade between the planets, something begins to emerge. It is sailing down toward you at a gentle, non-threatening speed arcing in almost slow motion. It is a shooting star, and there are more than one. They sail down toward you, creating a shield of pinks, blues, purples, and oranges as they are down, sending off sparks along the way that hover in the air and 
disappear like embers. The first shooting star lands on your head and melts into your body, bringing with it a sense of utter peace and calm. You feel any tangled thoughts you have been carrying completely and totally unwind, leaving you with nothing but serenity. Your jaw relaxes and your tongue falls away from your mouth, putting that entire part of your body at ease. And then the other shooting stars begin to fall. They pepper your arms and torso, bringing warmth as they do so. The muscles in your arms relax, releasing any tension they have been carrying throughout the day. Then, your chest does the same. You feel your breaths going a little deeper as your lungs expand, allowing more of this fresh, magical air into your chest. Your heart slows to a steady, relaxed pace as you sink deeper into your mattress with this renewed sense of serenity. And then, the shooting stars land on your legs, releasing any tension that you have been carrying in them. All your aches and pains melt into the mattress beneath you, disappearing like they never existed in the first place. It is an experience unlike any other. And then, the shooting stars rain down even more. They sprinkle over your whole body, landing against you with a metallic, ethereal ting, 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 as they tap against you and melt into you, bringing that sense of calm with them. The planets and stars above seem to sparkle a little brighter now that you have welcomed them, and as you gaze up at them, something around you shifts in the most surprising way. You are now lying in the grass. It is a warm summer evening the kind of summer evening that brings you back to carefree childhood days, meandering through the countryside. You brush your hands over the tall, soft grass that is cushioning you, inviting you to be one with the earth. The summer air buzzes with humidity but the touch of the grass is cool against your skin, making you feel comfortable and cozy, and reminding you that cooler hours are ahead as the moon rises higher and higher in the sky. In the distance, you can hear the chirping of crickets, they sing their song out into the universe, delicately crafting the soundscape of summer nights around the globe. There is a pond to the west of you, where the moon is heading. The crescent luna is reflected upon the glassy surface. Peepers croak into the night air, as they nestle onto lily pads lining the shore of this little forest haven. You are staring up at the sky in wonder. It is a crisp night, 
the kind of night where the stars and planets seem to only be inches away from you. It feels like at any moment you can reach up and grab hold of the stars, brushing through the black expanse of space like you're simply running your fingers through pond water. Beside you, there are two children, Celeste and Callum, who are gazing up at the cosmos in awe, their eyes reflecting the beautiful expanse. You've been tasked with watching these darlings, and it is not a challenging task in the least. They are curious, well-behaved children, children that want nothing more than answers from the universe. They ask the questions that you gave up asking long ago, questions that you want answers to, whether you've realized it or not. How old is the universe? Celeste chimes, her voice ringing through the air. You tell her you can't recall. You're sure you saw it in a textbook sometime, somewhere, but the number escapes you. You settle by telling her it was created a long, long time ago. What are stars made up of anyway? Callum asks, stretching his arms up as he tries to grab them. You tell him that you're sure it's gas or stardust. Surely, it is something of that nature. They ask questions for quite some time, not in a way that annoys you, but in a way that intrigues you. There are so many things to know, so many things that you want to discover. Then, something miraculous happens. There is a streak across the night sky. It is a streak of silver, so bright that it looks as if it's glittering with magic. The kids sit upright as their mouths fall open with surprise. What was that? They ask in unison. You smile at them because that is an answer that you know. My darlings, it's a shooting star. You expect the answer to satisfy them, but then they chirp up with another question. What are they made of? Where do they come from? When were they made? How do they get here? The embers of curiosity rumble deep inside you, a well that is begging to be filled. For quite some time, you lie there and look at the shooting stars flying down, one after the other. They arc across the sky with such majesty and beauty that you are all stunned into silence, simply taking in this beautiful, miraculous moment. Finally, the twins' parents arrive to pick them up, thanking you for your help. And as the twins walk away, you can't bring yourself to stand up just yet. You turn your gaze back to the sky, watching as more and more shooting stars come tumbling down to you. You wonder about the questions they've asked, about the details entwined with this miracle that is our universe. And as you wonder, 
something above you draws your attention. It is a shooting star, only it is not arcing across the sky away from you. It seems to be getting bigger and brighter. It streaks down through the atmosphere, painting the air around it in brilliant fiery reds, oranges, and whites. Embers seem to spark off of the shooting star as it heads down for you in a blaze. And then it crashes to the ground just beyond the pond. But the landing doesn't rumble the earth, something that surprises you entirely. You rise to your feet, stream drifts up from the spot of collision, and a hole seems to have formed in the soft earth. As you tiptoe toward the hole, you are surprised to hear someone yawning as if they're awakening from a long, much-needed nap. You move toward the hole even more slowly, until you're standing on the edge, the soil crumbling down around the sides of your feet. There is a woman lying in the hole the shooting star has created, but she is unlike any woman you have ever seen. She is cloaked in a robe of silver, with blue stars glowing across its surface. Her hair is as inky black as the night sky, with flecks of silver peppered across it that sparkle in the moonlight. And her face is delicate and beautiful. She opens her eyes and smiles at you, a smile that makes you feel completely at ease, even in a situation as strange as this one. Who are you? You ask. The woman rises to her feet and stretches with yet another yawn before she clambers out of the hole and extends her hand to you. My name is Stella, she proclaims. So, you are a shooting star? You ask. Well, she chimes, technically, I was a meteoroid, and now I am a meteorite. She takes you by the hand and leads you down into the hole with her. But I can explain all that when we get where we're going. You ask the woman where you're going and she smiles at you. Well, space, of course, she replies. In the hole behind her is a cozy capsule made of wood. Inside, there is a plush blanket adorned with stars. She invites you to crawl inside, promising you that the journey will be worth it. By the end of this night on Earth, you will have all the answers to the questions that the kids sparked within you. You take a deep breath and step into the capsule, and as you do, the door closes behind you, locking you safely inside with the plush blankets and comfortable pillows. The walls of the capsule are made of lush mahogany, something that comforts you and makes the strange experience feel utterly luxurious. And slowly, 
Stella raises her hand. You drift up out of the dirt, sailing up into the sky alongside her like magic. You watch in awe as the world below you changes entirely. The trees shrink as you rise higher and higher. The mountains that were once towering over you are now nothing but craggy paint strokes on the canvas that is Earth. Soon, the entire country becomes a mosaic of rivers, mountains, meadows, and deserts. You rise up and out of the atmosphere with ease. Now when you look down, you see the earth in its entirety, and it is the most beautiful sight you have ever seen. Against the inky blackness of space, the blues and greens of the earth pop. But those are not the only colors before you. There are magical sepia tones of the mountains, the rugged rusty shades of the deserts across Africa and China and Australia and the United States. There are the emerald greens of the rainforests and the deep greens of the alpine forests. And above all, this is the cottony haze of clouds which swirl around the planet in fantastical patterns that seem too magical to be real. You finally peel your gaze away to see Stella smiling at you, knowingly. It is beautiful the first time you see it in person, isn't it? She chimes. For a moment, the two of you continue to look down at Earth, admiring it for its sheer beauty. How remarkable it is that we exist at all. Then, there is a whoosh beside you. A gray mass of what looks to be rock zips by heading straight for the earth. You watch as it begins to burn in the atmosphere, igniting with an aura of red, orange, yellow, and white. Then another whooshes by, then another. With each one, you are coming face to face with a cosmic wonder. These are meteoroids, Stella smiles as she tells you. These are my siblings. Meteoroids are lumps of matter, mainly made of silicon, oxygen, and heavier metals like iron and nickel. They orbit the sun, much like planets, asteroids, and comets do and they are incredibly common. You turn behind you to see that she is absolutely right. Thousands of meteoroids float through space, all moving in arcs. They are beautiful, glistening brightly as they reflect the light of the sun to the left of you. Meteoroids are mainly formed from the collision of asteroids, which orbit the Sun in a region between Mars and Jupiter's orbits, called the Asteroid Belt. She snaps her fingers, and suddenly, you find yourself in an entirely different part of the universe. To one side of you is Mars a tiny, brilliant red planet that looks too ethereal to be true. 
the rusty red planet pops against the backdrop of space. On your other side is Jupiter, the behemoth of the solar system. The planet is so stunning that for quite some time you can't look away from it. Jupiter is enveloped in storm clouds that swirl across the surface, never ending. These are in bands of color, deep, dark reds, light, sandy hues, and brilliant golds that seem to sparkle like they contain millions and millions of diamonds. And all around you, there are hundreds, thousands of asteroids that sail on by. Stella looks at you with another smile, happy to see you so invested in her former home. This is, of course, the asteroid belt. The asteroids orbit the sun here, but on occasion, they collide with one another. Just as she says this, two asteroids near you collide. They crack with force, splintering into dozens of pieces. They scatter across space like pieces of glass, sparkling in the sun, which is far, far away from you now. The pieces careen out of orbit, heading in an entirely different direction now, heading toward Earth in the far distance. When the asteroids collide, they break into pieces called meteoroids, and these meteoroids sail across space until they are drawn to the gravity of another planet or satellite. Slowly, your capsule begins to pick up speed. You fly alongside Stella as she guides you, dipping and diving around meteoroids. You sail over the surface of Mars, gazing down at the craggy, mountainous landscape below, a landscape that was carved by water millions and millions and millions of years ago. A landscape that is painted red by the high presence of iron in its soil. You find yourself following along with the flurry of meteoroid debris that was created in the collision of the two asteroids. And as the meteoroids near the Earth, you pick up speed even more. Stella floats effortlessly in front of you as she continues to explain. Meteoroids fall through Earth's atmosphere at a fairly high speed. Depending on their size and composition, they can travel anywhere between 36,000 feet and 200,000 feet in a single second. At this speed, they become heated to incandescence by collisions with air molecules in the upper atmosphere, creating a streak of light via their rapid motion. And sometimes, also by shedding glowing material in their wake. This visible passage of a glowing meteoroid through Earth's atmosphere is called a meteor or a shooting star. You glance all around at the meteoroids falling to Earth. They burn red hot as they push on through the atmosphere at high speed, and you sail right alongside them, your eyes wide with awe. And if the meteoroid is hot enough and small enough, 
it will evaporate completely, Stella continues. Just as she says this, a meteoroid beside you disappears, leaving behind a trail of hot gas. The gas sparkles in the air like glitter. But if the meteoroid is heavy enough and its composition is able to resist its journey into the atmosphere, it can land on the surface of the Earth. In the distance, you watch the meteoroids land on the grassy surface below, kicking up clouds of dust as they do. And if a meteoroid lands on Earth, it becomes a meteorite. You nod in understanding as you watch people race from nearby houses on the surface to investigate these incredible meteorites that have now peppered the countryside. Slowly, you head back up into space, rising through the atmosphere until you're looking down on Earth again at the glowing, twirling, living marvel that we all call home. But how did the asteroids form, you ask? Where did they even come from? Stella smiles, pleased to see you're asking even more curious questions. Once more, she snaps her fingers. Only this time, there is nothing. You are in a black expanse, unable to see anything except for Stella, who is glowing and giving you a reassuring smile. She moves to the side, revealing a tiny, incredibly bright point in the blackness. It is so bright that you shield your eyes as you look at it, but it is beautiful like a star. The universe began as an infinitely hot, dense point that was indescribably small. It was not unlike a supercharged black hole, surrounded by nothingness. And then, 13.7 billion years ago, it exploded. The tiny dense point before you explodes with color, expanding before your very eyes. But, you cannot see anything else around you. This kick started the radiation era, which was made up of several smaller stages called epochs that occurred in the first tens of thousands of years of the universe's formation. The first stage, the Planck Epoch, immediately followed the event which began the known universe. The temperature and average energies within the universe were so high that every day subatomic particles could not form, and even the four fundamental forces that shape the universe, gravitation, electromagnetism, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force were combined and formed one fundamental force. At the end of the Planck era, gravity separated from the electronuclear force. Next was the Grand Unification Epoch which is named for the three remaining unified forces of nature, strong and weak nuclear forces and electromagnetic force. This era ended when the strong nuclear force 
separated from the remaining two fundamental forces. Then, there is the inflationary epoch, in which space itself expanded faster than the speed of light. In a mere instant, it grew from the size of an atom to the size of a grapefruit. The universe was full of elementary particles, and it was still piping hot, but it was starting to cool down. Then, the electroweak epoch occurred. This is when the weak nuclear force separated from the electromagnetic force. This led to the quark epoch where all the raw ingredients within the universe were present. But the universe was still much too hot and much too dense for anything to form from these ingredients. Then came the Hadron Epoch, when the universe finally cooled down enough for quarks to bind together, forming hadrons which are composite particles like protons or neutrons. All of the epochs described so far happened roughly within one second after the Big Bang. And after the first three minutes, the protons and neutrons had assembled into hydrogen and helium nuclei in the lepton epoch. Despite having atomic nuclei, the young universe was still too hot for electrons to settle in around them to form stable atoms. The universe's matter remained an electrically charged fog that was so dense, light had a hard time bouncing its way through. It was in the matter era that the universe as we know it truly began to form. This era spans millions and millions of years. The universe finally cooled down even more, allowing electrons to attach to nuclei. This created neutral hydrogen, which combined with helium to coat the universe with atomic clouds. The pockets of gas within these clouds had enough gravity for atoms to be able to collect within them. As she speaks about atomic clouds, something miraculous happens around you. You watch as hazy clouds spread across the blackness in front of you. They glow a strange yellow and orange that looks unlike anything you've ever seen before. She smiles at your reaction and then continues. Within those clouds and that collection of atoms, the seeds that created galaxies began to form, and as these seeds were planted, stars began to form. Stars blip to existence in front of you, roiling hot balls of gas that glow such bright colors you can hardly believe what you're seeing. They illuminate Stella in a brilliant glow. Though we can only see about 6,000 stars from Earth on a clear night, there are over 100 billion stars just in the Milky Way. And scientists believe that the entire universe contains 200 sextillion stars, Stella explains. More and more stars blip to existence from the clouds before you. They each sparkle in their own way, unique combination of gases. 
Stella continues, the heat from these stars are what forged almost every other element in the universe. They were truly what allowed planets to become planets. Beside you, a star flashes brilliantly, impossibly bright, and expands across the sky rippling across a cloud of gas, dust, and ice. At one point, scientists believed a star exploded, disturbing a nearby cloud. This cloud's gravity increased as it spun faster and faster, and the gravity of this cloud formed the elements in the cloud into planetesimals. These planetesimals grew larger and larger as the gravity bound more and more bits together, eventually forming them into protoplanets. And as the gravity grew more and more, these protoplanets became the planets that we know today. Around you, large masses grow larger and larger until they become early, early stepping stones to the planets that we know today. You watch as the planet's colors shift and the planets themselves change until finally they become the planets in our modern solar system. Jupiter looms beside you, those swirling clouds in perpetual motion. Around you, asteroids seem to be collecting. Scientists believe that Jupiter's gravity is so immense that it trapped asteroids here. Whenever protoplanets began to form, Jupiter's immense gravity would force them to collide, breaking them back into asteroids. The gravity of Jupiter is what keeps many asteroids trapped here, unable to form into anything larger. The asteroids zip around you, and yet again, to collide. A meteoroid breaks off, and you find yourself following it with Stella by your side. You sail with the meteoroid toward Earth. You sail past Jupiter, waving goodbye to its stunning rings of rust, sand, and gold. You sail past Mars, waving goodbye to its stunning, blinding red surface. And then, you begin to approach Earth, which has never looked more beautiful. As you sail through the atmosphere, meteoroids all around you begin to burn bright red, orange, and yellow. You watch as several burn up and disappear into nothing but a trail of gas. And then, you're gliding toward the ground. The mountains grow as you approach them. The beautiful contours of the planet, the riverbeds and canyons and glades, they all begin to come back into sight. And, slowly, the trees glide toward you. When you finally land on the ground, you splash into the pond finding yourself in a world of blue. The capsule releases you immediately, and you float to the surface of the refreshing water. The surface of the water is silver with the glow of the moon, which you sailed by only moments ago. The crickets and frogs chirp and sing their song to the universe as you pull yourself out of the pond. 
you find yourself walking over to where Stella landed, ready to thank her for sharing her knowledge. Now, you know where the universe came from. You know what shooting stars are. You know how many stars there are. And you feel even more at home on Earth. But instead of Stella, you find a meteorite in the hole burrowed into the Earth. You pick it up and it is warm to the touch, beating like a heartbeat. The feeling soon fades, and you know it was Stella, bidding you farewell. You walk home in the moonlight with a smile on your face. Tomorrow, you will be watching Celeste and Callum once more, and this time, you will have answers. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please join me again tomorrow for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.